please, I am begging you, do not use ChatGPT to do research. Do not use ChatGPT to do research. Do not use ChatGPT to search for things. Listen, I know, I know it makes research seem really easy. I'm a machine learning engineer. I've been futzing around with LLMs since the beginning of this whole craze, but it's not a mind. It's not a search engine. It doesn't know anything. It doesn't know anything. It doesn't have thoughts. It doesn't have a database. Stop it. Stop using it. I'm not even going to get into the woke shit that I also believe in. We're just talking about truth here and like the use of a tool that doesn't work to do things. Okay, example. Wow, it's super crazy that all of these critics were super wrong about all of Francis Ford Coppola movies, and I'm sure they're going to be super wrong about Megalopolis, which I'm sure is, like, fantastic. But that Pauline Kael quote seems weird, because I thought she really loved The Godfather. Let's go... Why don't we go look up on her review of The Godfather that quote? Huh. Weird. It seems like... Maybe... She didn't say that quote. And in fact, several of the critics in this ad didn't say the quotes that they are quoted as saying. And in fact, maybe they made up a bunch of quotes using ChatGPT by accident because they thought it was a search engine. It's really easy to do that. You just say, hey, tell me some quotes about negative reviews from The Godfather. And then it'll just make some shit up and put real people's names on it. Crazy. Okay. Let's get two things straight here. One, ChatGPT knows nothing. It doesn't know it. I don't know nothing. I just work here. Now two, ChatGPT always wants to say yes. Always. I see it all now. You're just a bunch of yes men. I was making the wrong moves and you were too gutless to tell me. Isn't that right? Yes. That oh, yes, sir. Right on. Okay, another example. Hunter Biden got pardoned by his father for his crimes. I wish that would happen to me, but my father will not answer my calls. Here's an article from the Esquire magazine by Charles Pierce talking about Neil Bush being pardoned, except Neil Bush was never pardoned. He never got a pre presidential pardon. And similarly, someone from The View made up Hunter DeButts. Hunter DeButts using ChatGPT. What are we doing here? Why are we hunting butts? I just... <laughs> and I don't know why you wouldn't just go to Wikipedia. We have a whole list of people who have been pardoned by the presidents with citations and people arguing if you get something wrong. They, they immediately go in and they say, you're an idiot. And there's all of this information that is just readily available. Just use a search engine. Okay. Okay. I'm cool. I'm calm. I'm chill. When I asked some of the people who follow me what they do with ChatGPT. I got a mixed response, but a lot of people said they used it as a research assistant, and several people said it retrieved information from a large database to respond to user queries. It doesn't have a database. It d can't research using a database because it doesn't have one. It has connection to the internet, but it doesn't understand what it's reading. It just uses that text as a prompt. Here's another example where I asked about Hugo Trump, the fake nephew of Donald Trump, and it gave me two responses and one just made up a new Trump. We don't need more of that. We don't need more Trumps. Or another example, I gave it a fake URL and asked it to write a paragraph about the fake URL. And it pretended to go to that URL and created a summary for me based on what the URL looked like. Some guy I follow on LinkedIn said you can make a table and write alt tags for a bunch of pictures and then list the URLs and then it would give you the response with a beautiful alt tag. Except in his example that he was using he said that this man was Steph Curry. Hold <laughs> 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 on.
on by my colleague's creative use of ChatGPT, I tried it for myself and I gave it this image URL and it said it's two people contesting a shot. Now speaking of balls, let's take a look at what different AI and generative programs think of the disco ball emoji. Boomerang. 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 So why does ChatGPT think this saluting emoji is in an anatomical human heart? Why does it think a disco ball is a boomerang? To get into that, we're going to need to understand how emojis work. Emojis are a unicode, like, code. They have a specific code that signifies them to browsers, to your phone, to everything. And a group of people have to get together and decide on new emojis and then give them the new codes for those emojis. So they can be standardized across different places. And if there's a new one, ChatGPT doesn't know what it is and it doesn't have the context of what people use it for. But it does know what the shape of Unicode is and the shape of an emoji is. So it tells you something that it would do for a different emoji with a new emoji that it hasn't seen before, which is why it says this is a boomerang. It knows the shape of words and it knows the shape of truth, but it doesn't know what the truth is. Okay, here's another example. Let's let's have a little fun. This is a very simple riddle. One of the four words for each of these sequences is not a member of the set. It does not belong. So we've got like green, yellow, red and blue. April, December, November, and June. Cirrus, Calculus, Cumulus, and Stratus. Let's look at GPT's response. Blue does not belong because the other colors are primary colors, green, yellow, and red. Calculus does not belong because the other words are types of cat clouds. That's correct. Potatoes do not belong because the other words are root vegetables, carrots, radishes, and cabbages. So what we can see here is it knows the shape of the correct answer, but not the actual answer. Another one. Uh, this is a classic children's riddle. The response is ch Chicago. Uh, this says Chicat Goat. Now, OpenAI has fine-tuned it, so now it gets the response right. It says Chicago. But let's dig a bit deeper to see if it actually understands the prompt and ask it to make a riddle based on this prompt of its own. What does it do? Well, it doesn't understand. <laughs> What's two thirds candy, one third apple, and one half bear? Canada. Two thirds of candy? Can, correct. One third of apple? Ah. Uh. One half of bear? Da. Hmm. Okay, let's talk about how ChatGPT actually works. And to do this, I made a much smaller, less functional ChatGPT so we could take a look at it. So we've got mostly our documents are just sentences about apple pie. And if I enter my prompt, an initial token, you can see the sentence generated is I love apple pie is known as the king of. Predicting based on I that the next word is a has a hundred percent likelihood of being love but then after that it starts diverging here's another example from OpenAI itself it was a dark and stormy night the next token after it was a dark and is storm and it's with 95 percent likelihood so if we add more documents to this model we can see kind of creates relate these relationships. Basically, GPT is a very weighted die. You are weighting it with the inputs and it is pulling based on the likelihood of what the next sentence might be. When you understand this, it makes it a lot easier to understand why GPT is wrong so often. And to talk about that some more, we're going to have to talk about something called 
temperature. So temperature is a the likelihood of something to be random when it refers to ChatGPT. High temperature, temperature 212 degrees is going to be more random and low is going to be less. And then you have pop P. Pop P is culling from the most likely examples. So if you have 10 words that are super likely, pop P four will mean you only pick from the four most likely. Something high temperature will almost always get stuff wrong because it is more random. And something with low temperature will almost always plagiarize because if it's not random, it is extremely likely that the words are in that order somewhere in the data set. And fundamentally, it's not retrieving anything. It is trained on this data, they are input, and then they are mixed up and output in an order that makes sense. And so that leads to stuff like saying Andrew Johnson earned 14 degrees between 1947 and 2008. And it leads to everything going towards a mean where you can't make a woman be taller than a man. It leads to quirched up white boys. It leads to racist and generic stuff. It leads, it leads to all sorts of things and the way OpenAI and other companies have chosen to respond to criticism is not by making other things, it's by fine-tuning and training over and over again. And they do that by getting a bunch of underpaid workers, paying them next to nothing, and having them type out content and respond to content and look through content and create it. And they're never going to catch everything. It's never going to be finished. It can never match humanity's ability to make up bullshit. It's always going to be racist, always going to be plagiarist, and it's always going to make mistakes, and those mistakes are always going to be embarrassing. It isn't a research tool. It is a generative toy that the entire tech sector has put its back on. It is something that could best be used like a rubber duck. And we are building a house of cards on top of it, and it makes me crazy. So I'm begging you, don't use ChatGPT as a research tool. That's not, even if I wanted you to use it for anything, that's not what it's for. Just use Google and your own damn brain. Thanks for your time. Thank you.